AI sloth. This is a term that I'm seeing a lot online now. Basically, people are very, they have negative feeling towards AI. And I understand why. I mean, a lot of the stuff that AI generates, like you can easily tell it was generated by AI. But it's reaching a point where now it's not that sloppy. Like before, maybe six months ago, everything was pretty sloppy. But there's new image models coming out that generate very, very nice images that you can almost not even tell it's AI generated. There's tools like Cursor, which I have been using basically every day when I work on the video crafter to add in new features. And after work, when I don't have time and I can't really think as well, I just use Cursor, it implements a feature, it adds drop downs, it adds toggles. It works pretty good, right? I, I usually only have to reprompt it maybe once or twice to get it working pretty good. So in my opinion, the coding aspect of AI generated code isn't too sloppy. I mean, we have like V0 and other AI tooling, which basically can generate a whole UI for you with a single prompt. I mean, the UI obviously is not going to look perfect. You still have to come in with like a fine tuned pen and like make it look better, uh, which does take the experience and expertise in terms of the design. But I have used like cursor for generating front end code, back end code, and it does pretty well. I mean, like it can do stuff faster than myself. You reach a point in your career where you can only code so fast and you can only implement so much as a single developer. And so using AI tools to just expedite that process is very, very good in my opinion. So AI slop. Images are no longer sloppy in my opinion. And just to kind of show you, if I just wanted a quick little image, I'm gonna say a man standing on a mountain, orange glow, sun setting, HDR bloom, uh, photo realistic. Let's just like run this and see what we get. That generated an image in 0.6 seconds. And if you look at this image, I mean, you could probably not even tell this is AI generated. The face looks a little cartoonish, which might be the giveaway. To me, like this is not slop. And this is actually pretty mind blowing and has been for a while. It's getting better and better and better. And so when people say that stuff is just AI slop, I'm just like confused, I guess, because I see this as potential. Like this is something good. I could just put an inspirational quote down here and I could use this in a video. I could use this on a poster, a banner, or whatever I wanted to. I could use this on the landing page. If you're trying to sell some type of inspirational book. And then if you want to, I mean, you could crank this up and say, I want to do four outputs. And now you're going to get four different images that you could potentially use. And you just pick the best one, right? I could just select any of these and then I can iterate on it. Mid journey is really cool too, because you can like paste a reference image and it's going to try to keep the, the characters consistent if you know how to kind of tune it. So I guess my point is the images that AI is generating is almost reached a point where it's like, it's not sloppy anymore. The code has reached a point where it can be sloppy, but if you get really good at prompting and giving enough context before you ask it to do stuff, it can be very, very good at giving you a one shot good result that you can just approve. And this applies to front end and back end, at least for TypeScript and JavaScript. I don't know how this works with Rust or you know, C++ where you have to do like manual memory management. Sorry, Rust, you don't have to do that, but like, you get what I'm saying, like depending on the programming language, maybe it doesn't do as well, which is where a lot of people might be coming in. Um, maybe there's just more data that these models have been trained on for TypeScript and front end and web development and other languages just kind of fall short. But for me, I have seen a legit productivity increase by using AI. Not only does it help me write code faster, it also helps me get motivated because I can just ask it to do something simple. It's going to go through and modify all these files it might get a couple of things wrong, but then as a developer, I don't have to think as hard. I can come through those files, just review them and be like, oh, I see an issue here. Let me just fix it real quick. So if you do know how to code, I think it just makes you a little bit more productive and can really increase your drive to just like fix the code that it's generating. And it's getting a lot better. I mean, like a year ago using ChatGPT 3.5, the code is typically bad and like it has errors and it just doesn't work. And then like in less than a year, we have like new models that come out that are just so much better at generating accurate code. In terms of coding, it's it's a little bit, I would call it like AI sloppy. You know, it's a little sloppy, but it's getting better. It's like sloppy Joe, but it's not just complete slop. I mean, like it, it has productivity benefits to it from what I've seen. And granted, I'm a web developer, right? So maybe the things I'm working on are not like super hard stuff. Like maybe this doesn't work well for embedded systems. Maybe this doesn't work well if you're building out operating system drivers. But for a lot of developers in the web dev space, like this is some good stuff. Now let's talk about the very last one where I think AI kind of sucks at, and that is writing. I've been trying to use AI to help write scripts for stories. Now maybe it's because I'm using 4.0 mini for my um, my chat generation and my, my video crafter, but for what I've seen, using AI to generate a story, it's very, very... Uh, it's, it's, I would call it slop still. It's still kind of slop. 
even if you were to use it to write a, a blog post, it's kind of slop. And the reason is AI loves to throw in some random stuff into your stories that just feels weird, right? So I'm going to say, write me a short horror story, 150 words about a guy urban exploring a house. Make it first person, make it a reading level for a fifth grader. And I'm going to say, keep the language simple. Do not add superfluous, I think I spelled that wrong, superfluous uh, words and descriptions. So this is doing a lot of like introspection. I shouldn't have come alone here. Like I, I personally wouldn't write that in a YouTube short. I would probably say this is good, but rewrite it as if someone was talking to a friend sharing their past experience with this urban exploring. Okay. And this is a little bit better. If you read through this, if you just cut off this part and say, I'll never forget that night. A few years ago, back when I thought urban exploring was cool, there was this old house on the edge of town, boarded up, broken windows. Like this is good. If I had copied all this and put it into my video crafter, I think this would make a pretty engaging story. But my point is, is that you cannot blindly just use AI. But I will argue that, you know, iteration one of writing, unless you get a really good prompt, it's usually going to be pretty bad. Now let's try doing the same thing over here in perplexity and see if it does a little bit better. Uh, I stood in front of an old house in Maple Street. My friends dare me to explore it. So let's just go ahead and also do this. I'm going to say rewrite it as if you're sharing it to a friend. Okay, so now we have something that's decent, right? I could take this as my outline and I can go and I can add it in right here. I'm going to say exploring the old house. And then we're going to go ahead and just make four segments. And then I'm going to go ahead and just create this real quick. Okay, so now we got some images that describe like the story a little bit. Out of nowhere, I heard a whisper right behind me. I spun around, but no one was there. Okay, that one's kind of creepy. So my point is, is that is AI slop in terms of writing? I would say it kind of is, but if you just get good at understanding how to revise and like prompt better, you can get some pretty good output. And then you can come through here and like rephrase some stuff. So like instead of saying, so let me tell you about this crazy thing that happened to me when I was exploring an old house. I'll say I used to urban explore a lot as a kid and there was an old abandoned house me and my friends wanted to check out okay boom that reads a little bit better my friends dared me to go inside and i couldn't back down when i pushed the door open it creaked like it was warning me to leave like this this i would not add in so when i pushed the door open it let out a slow eerie creak that echoed throughout the empty house I, I probably not even put eerie. It let out a slow creak that echoed throughout the empty house. Okay, I, to me that reads a little bit better. So my point is, is that yes, AI is not perfect, but it is definitely a tool that you should be utilizing in all your creative processes. If you just want the extra boost. I mean, I could probably write this story by hand and I have a bunch of stories that I've written. Like I didn't even use AI to write the segments. I just did it all by hand and let the images be generated. But my point is, is that we have AI for images, which is very, very phenomenal now. We even have AI for videos, which is starting to get phenomenal. We have AI for code, which for the most part, I would say it's not phenomenal, but it's pretty good. And if you get good at prompting, for example, I could go ahead and highlight this whole function and say, hey, check this for any security issues or check this if there's a better way you can dry this up or refactor this. Okay. And then we also have different models for basically just writing. So like if you want to write a blog post or want to write a story, like you have these options. And I think as a developer, and like if you're trying to get into any industry at this point, I would recommend that you play around with these tools at least daily, understand how to write better prompts, understand the different models, understand which model will do better than the other, and just get a good sense of like how you can utilize these in your day-to-day -day workflow. Like I've even seen AI integrated into this eraser IO project. Like I can even go over here and just like generate a diagram from AI. So I'll be like, make me a diagram about OAuth and then it will generate the diagram for me. My point is, is that like, I guess I get a little bit mad when people keep saying online that AI is slop and like the content that AI makes is slop because yes, if you just let AI do the entire process, it will generate slop. But in terms of this product that I'm making, that's not the intent. And I've gotten a lot of angry comments saying that I'm ruining the internet with this product, even though no one uses it. Like I don't have users, so like I'm not ruining anything, but from my perspective, this should be a tool to help you generate faceless videos. All these other tools should be tools to help you write code faster and hopefully 
check your code for security issues or check your code and how to refactor it. You should be using ChatGPT and other models to help you write better blog posts and to help you with ideation and other things. You should be using these image models to help you create uh, application icons that you can use. For example, the logo in the video crafter, I used AI to generate it, right? So it's just these little things that like, keep in the back of your mind that you have these tools available to you. And like, if you can get good at understanding how to prompt stuff, it's just gonna make you a better like entrepreneur or indie hacker or whatever you're going for. I guess that's all I wanted to talk about. I just keep getting kind of annoyed with the people saying that AI is slop, um, but I just see so much benefit to using it. So it's just frustrating that other people don't understand it or where I'm coming from, but I think one day they will. All right, have a good day. Happy coding.